Okay, so we left off having saved the file, and we've created three individual buttons, Dreamweaver, Flash, and Illustrator, all from the same original source. Now, I want to create quite a few of these, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a completely new document to be working in. Okay, so there's my new untitled document. And what I want to do is I want to bring in a whole set of pre-prepared items, just like we did earlier on in the course. So we're going to import, what we're going to do is we're going to open an external library, and we're going to open up this finishedbuttons.fla file. Opening as a library only opens the library component and ignores the visual stage. And you can see here in this document I've got a whole set of movie clips, assets in folders and buttons individually. Now one nice thing about the library window is you can sort by type, which will group everything together. So over here in my library for this untitled document, I'm going to create myself a new folder, which I'm going to call buttons. And then I'm going to start off by taking all of these buttons that we can see here, After Effects, Dreamweaver, Fireworks, Flash, Illustrator, InDesign, On Location, so on, pick them up, and I'm going to drop them in there. And you can see what that's done is it's brought in the buttons, but also all of their assets and content. Quick sort by type again reveals that. And then inside here, we're going to create a couple more folders. Do that. Okay, we call this one Movie Clips. And let's take those movie clips from there and put them. in the movie clips folder and let's also create an assets folder and let's put all these assets in the assets folder like that. so I've got a buttons folder an assets folder with all the assets in it imported from those EPS files and then movie clips as well okay then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new symbol which we're going to call icons. Now, I'm always doing that. If you create a symbol as I've just done, I've called it icons, but it's the wrong type. I've created it as a button and not a movie clip. Don't go too far down the line. You can simply right click, go into properties, and change the type from button to movie clip. It's a lot easier to do this before you add it to the stage, so it's always good to work like this. So, into icons. Right, now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take all these icons like so, and drag and drop them onto my stage. Okay, Now they'll all end up in pretty much the same spot. Okay, Let's change their properties. Let's get them all at 0 and 0. The problem is they're really a bit on the large side, these. The width and height are massive. I'm going to link these together and I'm going to change the width and height for the whole lot in one go. I'm going to change the width to be about 60, I think. Is that too small? I think. Okay, let's increase that a little bit. 100, let's try that. Okay, so that's quite a good size there in the view. The next thing I want to do is I want to distribute them so they're actually sort of stacked out in a nice order from left to right. So I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to just move it. When you drag, if you hold the shift key, it always tracks along a dead straight line. I'm going to drop that about there somewhere. Now this is quite a nice little trick because if I then select all of them like this, I can go to Window and the Align panel. And in this Align panel, what I can do is if I turn off to Stage, I can space them out evenly horizontally. And you see it's not quite enough by the looks of it. This sound booth one, actually, no, it's not bad actually. The sound booth one needs to go up to a Y of zero. Like that. And I've now got a nice little string. And I simply did that by taking one element and moving it over to the right, then selecting all of them and spacing them out evenly. Great. The final thing I need to do is to select the whole lot because all of them need to have a blend mode of layer so that, that alpha transparency starts to have an effect back to scene one. So I've managed to now create a whole set of buttons but then link them together into this icons group. Let's save the file at that point. OK, 
Okay, so now what I want to do, I've got these icons, great, I want to use them on my stage. But of course, if I drag and drop that on, there's too many icons to fit on the stage. So here's the solution. It's a nice little trick. In the window menu, you'll find components. And in the components panel, there's a whole load of different user interface components, one of which is called the scroll pane. Let's drag and drop that one in. Now, the scroll pane is a resizable element, and we'll just put it in and we'll resize it for a moment. So about there, quick resize. Holding the Alt key should maybe work here. Yep, holding the Alt key just brings that out like that. Now, the great thing about the scroll pane is if we look at its properties in the component inspector, I've got a big side of the component inspector here, just bring that down. It has what we call a source property. And I can set that source to be my icons movie clip, spelling it in the same way as I have done over here. And if I enter and then I do a quick test, you can see I get an error because it can't find the file. I need to make sure these icons are actually going to be exported in the movie. And if I right click on the icons movie clip and go to properties, tick export for action script and click on OK, you can see now I get a scrollable pane where I can see all of the different items. Fantastic, isn't it? Now it gets better. No. The first thing that's really quite cool about it is we can actually get rid of the verticals and the horizontal scrolls. If I change the horizontal scroll here to a property of off and the vertical scroll policy to a property of off, quick test. I now don't get the scroll bar at the bottom, I just get the panel, but I can't now get to the other elements. But this scroll drag property just here, change that from false to true, and now when I test, I get a very sort of like multi-touch approach here. It'd be very useful in Flash Player 10.1 this, that you can actually publish to say the iPhone or a Nokia, and drag and drop to move the content around and actually view the different bits of the content. So we've placed a movie clip that we've produced into a scroll pane and it's given us the ability to actually interact with it and drag it backwards and forwards without having to write any action script code at all. Now that's great, you've got the interaction provided to you by the component, but the component does let you down unfortunately because it actually has this sort of border and there's also a white background to this component that's going to get in the way a little bit. To try and see that, let's come back to our main view. I'm going to take my timeline and I'm going to rename this layer scroll pane, just so that I know that's the scroll pane layer. And I'm going to lock it because I'm pretty much done with the scroll pane in terms of its position, and its size and colour. We'll add a new layer in and we'll bring it to below and we're going to call this background. Now the background layer is simply going to be a very big rectangle. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. And rather than worrying about its size when I draw it, just draw it, select it, X of 0, Y of 0, width of 550, height of 400 to match the stage. Unlock those two and then it might let me do it, 550. Now the way in which you're going to apply the colour, we're going to bring up the colour window, like that, and we're going to apply a linear gradient like this. Really simple idea. Then I'm going to take the gradient and I'm going to rotate it round. Like that. Squash it down. And to give us a sort of 3D style, sort of plane into the distance approach, I'm going to change the far end to a sort of light grey like this. And the midpoint, we're going to go a little bit darker, like that, and a little bit lighter, and then a little bit darker. That's going to give me a nice sort of moving. You can see we've got this sort of plain view. If we actually hide the top layer, you can see sort of dip, dip it up into the distance and then goes up into the sky. Great, let's make that top end a little bit lighter. There we go. OK, 
Okay, now, quick test. We'll reveal the scale of the problem. Looks great, but there's this sort of white area where the scroll pane is. If I bring back the scroll pane, we can see exactly how to get to this. Over at the side in the library, the component has brought in this component's assets folder. There's the scroll bar. And here there's a section of, sort of scroll pane skins and scroll bar skins. Okay, so there's the scroll pane disabled. Here's the scroll pane up, sort of standard view. Panel background, shadow panel background base, focus rex skin, arrow icon, and so on. So well, let's have a look at the scroll pane up skin. Just double click on that, and it brings us into this view. Black mouse pointer here, and we can start to explore what we've got. There seems to be something in here. Move that to one side. Ah, now that's interesting, isn't it? wonder what colour that element is. A nice simple way of doing that is if you click on the background and just quickly change the stage colour to something different, you'll be able to see what each element actually is coloured like. And you see that element I've just been moving around is this sort of white fill. Well, if I get rid of that, get rid of the colour window because I don't really need that at the minute, and come back to scene one, looks white still, but if I test it, the white background has gone. Fantastic. So we can come back into here. We need to get rid of the border now, so let's come back into the skin and we can see if we click here. Yep, there's definitely something there. If I move it, one great advantage of moving things rather than deleting them is you can move them, go, yep, that's the thing I want to delete, and then delete it. And of course, if you realize it's the wrong element, you can always, very simply, cheat and move it back with an undo. Back to there, quick test. And aha, great, so we've got this view now. Now this, all this content could do with moving down a bit, I think, in my view. So I'm going to take my scroll pane, unlock that layer, scroll pane there. I'm going to move it down a little bit, but I'm also going to shrink it a little bit so it's not taller than the region. Like so. Hold in my Alt key, which will just bring the bottom edge up like that instead. There we go. And a quick test, let's see what that looks like. Great could probably still come down a little bit more to really work with my gradients, so I'll shrink it down again a little bit with the Alt key, and just move it down a little bit as well. Quick test. And then I've got a series of icons sitting on this sort of imaginary plane with a reflection as I roll over, they grow, I can click on them, and I can drag them backwards and forwards as well. So really simple idea, you get interaction with the symbols, but you've got this scrollable area, all done using that off-the-shelf scroll pane component. And components are really important when you're trying to work and really attack more complex tasks. As a designer, you can employ developers' components that have been created with you in mind. Before we leave the project, I'm going to just change my stage colour back to white so that it's definitely correct, and do a quick test, I think, in the browser. So let's go File, Publish Preview, into the browser. So here we are in Safari. Here's my flash content. I still get my rollovers on my buttons and when I click and drag I get this interaction, this sort of multi-touch style experience in my content. Something that over recent years we've got very used to doing even if we can't see it straight away. So very very useful little trick there to move the content around. Okay with that We'll close Safari, make sure the file's saved, and we'll stop there.